Hi, welcome to CMS. We're still in the quantity surveying, in the structure work. We are going now to calculate the slab on grade. Actually, it is not need any calculation because CMS is calculated directly. He consider the area of the ground floor and consider the thickness, which you will put it here, and the, the rebar. You'll find here the page of the slab on grade, the same, the same button for, for moving through CMS. Here is a small sketch for the slab on grade to just tell you what is the slab on grade, which is the slab on the back filling to reach for the ground floor level. So it is normally it is in, it will be with the full area of the ground floor. So CMS consider the area of the ground floor. If you have any change, you can change the, this change this this data what is this table you will find here the type of the slab on grid if there is any name or type uh, the number of slab on grid whatever any dimension you will put here if it's repeated just put a repetition here is the size the length and the width and the depth depth is according to our design is 10 centimeter this will bring from the uh, from your drawings by default, CMS consider the width is 5 meter and he divide the area by this 5 so he consider the length like this this will not affect anything because at the end CMS calculate the full quantities and the full area and he consider the exact full area if you have any change you can easily change the number of the length and or the width meanwhile you add you will put here the rebar if you remember that it is the same almost the same uh, table of the foundation you have long span and short span you have bottom and top in the bottom rebar you will add only the how many number per meter and the diameter you will choose the diameter as we chose before for the bottom if you have top you will put the same that's all in the wrong direction you will go for short direction you will put also the number of rebar and the diameter according to the design that's for the slab on grid. All this information will be reflected in all the project aspects as we said before. We'll jump now for the next step, which is the columns and walls. So you reach here either from slab on grid with me mid next, or from the structure, you will go direct from columns and walls. What we have in this page? In this page, you can find the same buttons for going through CMS you will, you will find also the steps for how to deal with the columns how you insert the data of the columns and how you will get all the information required for the quantities and repairs for the columns and how it will be uh, reflected in all the project aspect go for step one you'll find it's modify the level you can click it you find the CMS guiding you directly for the change the level he start with the foundation bottom level he could consider here the foundation bottom level is the same of excavation maybe it is not correct anyhow this is according to your uh, design if you have a bcc or a back filling or any replacement for the this consider in the excavation so you will change here or modify here the exact common level for the uh, foundation bottom then you will go for the uh, slab on grade level that's the structure level you consider here the structure level if you have the structure level is 60 centi above the zero level which is 0.6 for meter consider here the level then put the next level for the structure level of the slab this level for the first slab above the slab on grid which is structure level you will put here the structure level for the first slab and the next slab of the typical which you consider the difference between this level and this level it will be the typical floor height this is only as a reference to facilitate the height of the column in the next stage you not need to enter every time every time the height of the column manually but you can do it if there is a difference in the column height this is only as a reference You'll find here in the page also this that's the outputs which you will gain after setting all the data as we said before for others elements you will find the repair for each diameter and the total repair the total concrete 
total concrete volume per cubic meter, the ratio between the rebar and the concrete, and the shutters for the column and walls, and the shutters for the neck column. That's the output. You will not enter here anything. Let's go for the next line. In this here in this rows, we will enter the number of the floors which share the same type of columns and how many floors is it for example we have first one is the neck column this cannot change second let's consider it as a ground floor because we don't have basement if you have a basement uh, you can write right here the first one is basement after first after ground floor there is a mezzanine so we will put m how many mezzanine it is one so it's okay the next is the first floor if the first floor and second and third and whatever have the same type of columns so we can put all in one cell say from floor one to floor three have the same type of columns and the same size and same reinforcement in this cell will say from one to three that means how many floors it is three floors so it will be considered as it, as it is. Next, from, for, from floor 4 to floor 7, that means 4 floors have the same columns. That's as per your design. Okay. Say from floor 8 to floor 11, have the same type and size of columns. That means it is also 4 floors till 15 it is another four floors then we have the roof it is one floor we don't need the others clear if the floors is not the same so we have to take it floor by floor what the limitation here is 34 types of floors, not type of column, type of floors. And if we have each four floor the same type, that means we have 34 times four floors. That's the way. Okay. So now we describe the number of floors of the column, which have the same, which share with the same type and size and enforcement of the same of the columns. Next step, we will enter the code of columns or the type of column and the quantity for each type and the dimension. From where? We'll get it from the schedule of the column as we, as we are doing every time. That's the columns. As it's mentioned here, ground floor have a dimension and rebar. First, second, and third have another so there is three floors five six seven eight so here is each three floors have different and so on we'll just enter the type c1 c2 c3 c4 and so on then the dimension for each type for example this is one meter by 30 this is no meter by 25 according to the design we'll enter the dimension of the column take care to start here from the small lens a is the small lens of the column if we are talking about 30 by 1 meter so 30 is here the 1 meter is here here is the tall lens here is the small lens this is important for CMS calculation of the rings okay the height of the column it is calculated automatically according to the levels which we enter for uh, CMS. If you need also to change, if you have another column height, you can change it easily by easy way. Now we finish the size of the column concrete. We need to go for the rebar. We will find the rebar in two categories. The first here is the link or the rings and the main reinforcement. You will find here the, uh, the rings. You can add how many number of ring per meter for each column and what is the diameter according to the diameter of which you will choose the ring diameter will change and 
and consequently the dimensions will change in the result. So if we have a column ring 8 milli each 20 centimeters that means 5 and 8 milli and so on. Next we'll go for the main reinforcement. We'll check in the drawing you will find the C1 have 16, 16 bars for 20 milli diameter. So we'll go for 20 milli and we'll write here 16. That's the way. We'll go for the diameter. Here we'll find the diameter which is considered before. And we'll just we'll go for each column and choose its diameter for according to the drawing. Whatever you will enter in the next column, it will be repeated for all the columns. Just only for make it easy not to repeat it every time. But as we said before, that for every group of floors, maybe have a different reinforcement. So we have to go for each one again and change if it's, if it's required. Normally, the next column must be the same of ground floor. If we need to go for first floor for the mezzanine floor, we'll just go here and click on M. You will find yourself here in mezzanine and change as you required. If it's not 16, maybe it will be 14, so you can add it as it is. Whatever you will change, you can change as you like. Floor height also is calculated according to the height which we entered before. If you need to change, if there is any change in the height of the, uh, in the floor height, you can change it easily. This to only calculate the rebar and this to calculate the concrete. That's how to enter the data for the columns and walls in, in CMS. So after inserting all this data, you will find the results automatically coming for the rebar and for concrete and for the shutter of the columns and the wall. And again, as we said before, it will be reflected in all the project aspects for the quantity surveying, material takeoff, a bill of quantities, scheduling, pricing, and management of the project. We'll continue the quantity surveying for the structure element. We saw before in the columns and wall. Now we'll continue for core wall and special concrete elements. When you open the page of the core wall and the special concrete, we'll find in the head of the page, title of the core wall, and link for walls and parapets and manaras and doom and tanks. So that's why it's called a core wall and special concrete elements. That's a special concrete element which is considered in CMS. Common special concrete used in the, in the building structure. We'll start now by core walls. If you have a core wall in your project, like a core wall for staircase or for a core wall for a lift, you have to consider it here. How CMS deal with the core wall? Let's see. In our project, we have these two types of core wall, core wall 1 and core wall 2. That's the detail of the core wall. You have dimensions and reinforcement. So we need to enter this data in CMS, the dimension of the core wall and the reinforcement type according to the schedule or the detail draw. Let's start to identify the core wall inside the CMS. Here we have to put the types of the core wall, as we mentioned now, W1 and W2 and so on. The numbers of the core wall, which can be repeated according to the floors, or may be repeated in the same floor for many times. So this numbers is, must be identified and recorded here. Then we'll go for the size of the core wall itself. According to the drawing, we have to give the dimension of the core wall. The length of the core wall, if all sides of the core wall have the same dimension, and the same repair description, you can consider this all as a one wall. You can take a submission of these four walls together. If not, if each wall have separate size or separate repair, you have to consider each side as a separate wall and can mention this in the type of the walls for your reference. So you will enter the length, then you will enter the height. You can enter the height of the floor. And as we said now, it will be multiplied by the numbers of the floors. Then you will put the, the, the thickness of the wall. 
the thickness of the wall which is here is 20 or 25 whatever okay now we have the size or the dimension for each wall you will enter by the same way for each kind of dimension length and height and thickness and numbers of the core wall second we need to insert the rebar we'll find here for the core wall the steel the horizontal reinforcement and vertical reinforcement we have outer reinforcement and inner reinforcement either for horizontal or for the vertical according to our drones you will find vertical and horizontal for inner and out whatever we have here we have to must be entered there for example according to this design we'll find here the vertical is number two then horizontal number three if we see number two and three in the schedule we'll find number two in the ground floor is 12 milli each 15 centi number three which is horizontal is 10 milli each five each 20 centi that means this is five piece per meter and this is almost seven piece per meter so according to this according to these numbers of floors we'll consider the repetition and if we are talking about the ground that means you have only one wall if we are talking from first first and second and third we'll consider this is as a three so first we need to enter the vertical reinforcement which is seven by twelve like this in the in the inner and the outer according to the drawing it is inner and the outer 12 milli each 15 centi 7 by 12 and for horizontal it is 10 milli each 20 centi so it is 5 inner and outer okay and as we said this is only for the ground floor so we can mention here this is a G W1 so we know now it is in the ground floor and it is only one piece what about number one which is 520 we can see here number one here and there which is in the corners we can consider this is all it's mentioned here as number one and it have a 20 milli rebar we can consider this also as a core wall we'll take this dimension the length of this we can take it all together if we, this is almost 30 centi plus another 20 centi and this is 40 centi and this 20 so we have 1 meter 20 we can consider now 1 meter 20 still in the ground floor and we can say this is corner also one piece the same height and same thickness now we add here 1 meter 10 that means it must be cut it from the wall itself so this will be 10.9 only okay and we'll put here the new only the new rebars the horizontal rebar not to change it it will be also five vertical rebar which is which is changed to 20 milli in the inner and the outer as it's mentioned here but what about the number it can be calculated here we have three inner three outer here is two inner two outer that means five five and here is two two that means seven seven and here is four four now we have eleven 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 in what eleven in one meter ten that means one meter ten we have eleven rebar that means we have ten rebar per meter so we can enter here 10 and 10 let's go for walls in floors 1 and 2 and 3 so we can also make a reference here 1 2 3 also W 1 so it's how many floors 3 floors that means 3 times of repetition let's take the dimension which shall be the same or maybe it can be changed also no problem if the thickness will be the same so keep it the same otherwise if it changes according to the drawing just check it and put the correct dimension okay what about this reinforcement you will find here all the same 
but what it changed only number one 16 milli instead of 20 so the main vertical and the horizontal rebar is the same 5 10 milli and it can be 6.7 12 milli for inner and outer rebar in vertical reinforcement but in the floors 1 and 2 and 3 W1 corner it is different you can see same size but the vertical reinforcement is different it's 16 milli and so on and the same for other floors which is four five six so we'll make one time and multiply by three then from seven to fifteen we'll write one time and multiply by eight and we'll do the required change and modifications and the same we will do for the other wall type which is w2 after completing of this we will have the output for the walls we will have the total reinforcement concrete quantity the shutter area and the details of rebar quantity the same it will be for the parapet and manaras and doom and tanks in our example we can check the parapet location in the in the last floor with section b and section c which is mentioned here the sections that's b which is five meter height and this thickness comma is 20 then another projections and section c the same dimension but the length was three meter and here is mentioned the reinforcement for both how this will be entered in the cms by a very easy way as we did before in the walls we have numbers of parapet, the length of the parapet, the height of the parapet, and the thickness. Okay, plus the reinforcement as we did before in the walls. How it will insert it? We will check the length. If we talk about section B, we will check the length of this section according to the plan. It will be in both sides. We can take the length directly from the dimension and put it in our case it is 30 meters we have here 15 and the other side is 15 so in our case we have a 30 meters for section b as we mentioned before it is 5 meter height and the 20 centimeter thickness what about the other projections if the if the puppet have some projections or have some uh, other types you can enter each one each piece one by one it is easy and you can take this rectangular separately and enter the same lens consider this is one number because we took the full lens one time and the same lens the height as mentioned here can consider 40 cm the width is 10 cm so it is it will be also 0.1 can take also the small projection with this with the same way one piece 30 meter and 10 centimeter height and 10 centimeter width for any type of parapet you can enter with the same if you have a very difficult uh, shape you can take the area by AutoCAD directly make a polyline or, or take area directly by area order from AutoCAD You'll find here the area is 0.2 this 0.2 we can consider it as a 1 into 0.2 we will have the same result so it will give you the same quantity of concrete and enter the rebar as we will see now what about the rebar in our case in our case we have the inner and outer vertical rebar is 12 milli each 15 centimeter so we can consider 6.7 rebar with diameter of 12 for the vertical reinforcements inner and outer so we'll consider here and there 
for the horizontal also inner and outer we have we have diameter of 10 centimeter each 15 centi that means 6.7 piece per meter with diameter of 10 centi inner and outer if we talk about the projection now which we just entered before which we entered before we can tell about also the same we have here only two pieces in the 30 centi height we have the same vertical 6.7 12 milli in both direction inner and outer and the same 10 milli horizontal inner and outer we have only two pieces but two pieces in 30 centimeters but we have this two pieces only in the outer so we'll go for we'll right in the outer 6.7 for 10 millimeter only in the outer not in the inner the same when we talk about this 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter we'll put we'll consider the vertical one the same we have also in the same both locations and the horizontal we have also outer so we'll consider the outer only but we have two pieces in the 10 centimeters that means in one meter we have 20 pieces so we'll put here 20 pieces like this the same we'll do for our, for the other type of parapet, which is three meter. We'll make the same, calculate the length, and we'll enter all the we'll enter all the, the data as we did before. At the end, you will find in the parapet the output you will receive in the parapet, which which is the quantity of the concrete, the diameter of the the quantities of the repair for each diameter, and the total, and the area of the shutters. CMS also helps in another type another special type of concrete like manaras and zooms which is helps in mosques or churches or temples as a special type of concrete but it's calculated by the same way as we calculate the walls and barbell we'll enter also the numbers and the size and the steel with the same type and the same way for such for manaras and for zooms in by the same way and tanks tanks also have the same method of calculation but the tank the same like walls with foundations and now we know how to enter the data for the walls and for the foundation plus the slabs which have the same way or the same method for entering the data like the foundation as we will see later and the horizontal elements of the structure which which is the slabs and beams we divided the horizontal elements for three categories in three locations the three categories same is have in the beams and the ribs of the slab and the normal slabs we make a separate partition for the ribs because the ribs need more calculations and uh, actually it have uh, some difficult calculation which required for a hardy slabs using the hardy blocks so it have some uh, techniques in the calculation so we separate it as a type of the slab uh, separately uh, same is serving for uh, most types of the slab because because most of the slab have the same way of the uh, of calculation except the ribs that's why we separate it alone as we'll see now that's related that's related to the categories for the locations we also divided the locations of this horizontal elements for three types or three locations according to just facilitate or to ease the method of calculation and to avoid conflicts and to make CMS calculate all the related aspects or the coming or the coming aspect in more easy way as we'll see now so we divided for the all the horizontal elements till the mezzanine or the till the podium which is the including all uh, uh, horizontal elements of the basements and ground floor and all the all the levels of the mezzanine or podiums because as we said before commonly in uh, all the buildings they have the same shape and the same uh, dimension Next is the typical floors, which also and commonly in the old buildings or most of the buildings have the same shapes and same, same dimensions and the same uh, descriptions also as a, as a reinforcement. And the latest is the roof floor because some also in the co commonly in the in most of the buildings we have the roof floor have a different dimension and description and types. So let's start now for entering the beams. According to our drawings, you can find here 
the slabs which is for ground floor and first floor who have it have almost the same shape we will, so we'll calculate only one and CMS will multiply all the data into two as we'll see now if we see the beams we can find it is as per our drawings it have B1 and B2 only because the slab is a flat slab so it, it, it minimizes the number of beams because the slab is a flat slab which have a minimum number of beams so let's start in the sheet of the beam we will find it is the same shape of the tie beam actually it is the same and what we will do here we will just repeat the same what we did in the tie beams some small difference there is no of course what's proof for the beams because this is the substructure uh, we'll find here this number which is number of the floor which is coming here automatically according to the our description of the project so it is considered here as a two and according to our project yes we have the two floors have the same shape ground floor and first floor have the same shape and same uh, reinforcement and same dimensions and everything so it is considered like this whatever we will enter here for all type of this uh, beams it will be multiplied by two type if it is not the same if you have your project you have the basement have separate shape and the very ground floor have another shape and the mezzanine have another third shape and maybe you have three five four uh, whatever numbers of shapes what you will do you will enter here only one and you will enter for each floor and each type of beam separately let's go for our example and we'll explain and it will be clear after two minutes according to our example we have the ground floor and, and the first floor or mezzanine floor have the same shape so it is considered here number two any number or any type will be inserted in same as in these cells it will be multiplied by two according to our drawing we will take the dimensions or we'll take the lens the same as in the type beam you will find here you will enter all the lengths of the beams for the same type must be shared in the same type so we will ensure you mention here that what the type of the beam what is the number of the repetition if you have one beam repeated more than one time with the same name it's with the same lens so you can enter it's one time only and repeat it here for for the same numbers of repetition otherwise we'll make the repetition one and put each lens separately we will insert also the the repair the same way which we did before we have here the bottom repair we have the top repair and the side repair and the rings or the stirrups here you can just add the floor id for your reference and for easing to come back to your sheet and know where, where is this beam it will be as also mentioned before in the tie beam if you have more than one layer in the rebar either in the bottom or the top of the rebar the information which you receive for each type of beams you will find here the total length and the surface area and the shutters area shall be the same area of shutters the difference here between the surface area and the shutters area surface area is in engineering wise is the same of the shutters of the uh, beams but this shutters area it is like uh, an extra calculation from CMS telling you what is the number of what the required shutter you will purchase because CMS is considering the margin of the wood CMS calculate the margin of the wood and increase on the surface area but engineering wise surface area it will be mentioned in the BOQ and shutter area it will be mentioned as the material for purchase the concrete volume per cubic meter the steel here per ton for each type and that's the steel ratio for each type this also for indication for your satisfaction let's see now how to enter the data to get all this information automatically in our project we have b1 and b2 only in the in this type of slab you will take the length of the beam including the area above the columns and you consider this in the length of the column in the, in the column sheets because the rebar of the beam is passing above the columns and cover the column area so you will take the dimension for the beams from center to center for each one okay 
can take it also directly by AutoCAD in dimension or you can make it as a full polyline to find the length according to our uh, project we have the length from center to center for B1 after the curve after a good dimension we have 5 meter 4.6 5.4 and so on and remember that we are entering only for B1 we are entering only the length of B1 each table must have only one type okay now we need to enter the other dimension from the schedule here we have B1 with dimension of 20 by 60 so we will enter here 20 and here 60 okay and the rebar the rebar for the beams we have also we have a bottom we have top the bottom straight which we have in CMS with code A uh, is 2 16 we'll enter 2 and 16 milli we'll choose 16 milli and in the mid span we have only one also 16 milli we'll enter one and uh, choose a 16 milli that's for the bottom for the top we have two straight and two above the column or extra top as we have here c and d it's also illustrated here so we'll enter the same we'll choose also the diameter of 16 with the two numbers in our case we don't have a side bars but we have of course a stirrup which is 8 milli each 20 centimeters that means 5 piece per meter with 8 milli and that's what will be inserted now 5 piece for with 8 milli and by default it must be two legs if it's not mentioned any number else so otherwise not mentioned any numbers of legs it will be considered a two legs only for the steers the same we'll do for the other types of beams we'll enter the lens and the dimensions from the schedules and of course the repetition and the same way for the repars and so on till finish all the types of beams whatever we entered here it is multiplied by 2 we asked one question before in case of a different types of slabs or a different types of beams till mezzanine or podium floors as we said before change this number to 1 then add the types and dimensions and enforcement for each type of beam for each slab separately till you finish all the slabs till mezzanine that's why we add here this cell which you can use it to which you can use to name the floor for this type of piece you can also jump through this sheet using this buttons and instead of scrolling the mouse and waste your time you can just jump direct like this we have here 150 types of beam which will cover for you most of the construction projects and the final data which you receive you will find here the quantities number of, of the repair per tons for each diameter and the concrete quantity for these beams and the ratio for your reference and as we said before the surface area and the shutters area the same what we did here in the beams till mezzanine and volume it will be repeated exactly for the typical beam and roof beam we'll find here the number of the typical floors it's also coming automatically because it was in the project description as we mentioned before we have here one type if you have another types also it will be calculated so any data will be inserted for one type of beam it will be multiplied by the number of the floors in our case it is a 15 floor so all the numbers will be calculated and multiplied in 15 floor that's because we have only one type of the typical floor if you have more you have to go again for the same and write here only one and enter each type of the beams for each floor separately so let's take an example of this let's say we have a three types of slabs five 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 because we have a 15 typical we we'll consider five and five and five in this case we'll we can make the repetition here with five 
and insert all our dimensions of the beams B1 and B2 and B3 whatever then we'll go again for another 5 so B1 will be 5 B2 also will be 5 B3 or whatever codes of beam it will be also 5 and we'll write all the dimensions for this beam it will be multiplied and calculated 5 times and it will be finally calculated and it will be all gathered together to give you the final number for this five floors the same will do for for the another five floors and you can also as we said before that we can mention here the numbers of the floor which have the same code with the same description then you repeat it again for another five floors the next five floors with the other beams even if you have again b1 so you can put it here and put the length of the beams and description of the beams they mentioned and the reinforcement as we mentioned before in the beam the same also will do for the beams of of the roof you'll do the same you will enter according to the drawing you will enter the type of beams which in the roof floor we have here like uh, roof rooms we enter the type of beam and the lens and the other description the other dimensions and reinforcement from the schedule as we just mentioned for roof only it will be considered as a one floor because normally the roof is one floor only if you have others floor two or three or whatever you will just add it one by one after you finish the type for first floor go for the another type for second floor and third floor and whatever if you have like this shape that's for how to enter the beams in CMS and see you in the next video explaining the other types of horizontal structural elements which is a slabs and the see you bye